Hello. Hello. Us again. Hello. Yep. So, we're going on about those 10 things people fail for, aren't we? We are going to do week two of um, the top 10 reasons why um, uh, pupils fail their driving tests. So last week we looked at number one, which was the junctions observations. Um, this week we're going to look at mirrors changing directions. This is number two on the list. Just to remind you that we have junctions observations, we have mirrors changing direction, number three is control steering, number four is junctions turning right, number five is moving off safely, number six is response to si uh, signs, traffic lights, Seven is moving off control. Eight is positioning normal driving. Nine is response to signs, road markings. And ten is reverse park control. So last week we did uh, junctions observations. This week we will do mirrors change of direction. And just to remind you, this is just about Blaine Lies kind of interpretation of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a couple of friendly examiners that I have that I'm also able to ask what they are seeing and noticing on the shop floor and uh, their thoughts when it comes to them um, marking this. Basically. Okay. So it was mirrors, wasn't it? So mirrors yeah. change directions as opposed mirrors to mirrors slowing down and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which is interesting itself because mm. it's not necessarily mirrors slowing down or speeding up that is on no. the list at all. No. So it's a specific change of direction thing. And this is reflected certainly in what the examiners have, have told us, which is it tends to be a classic symptom of a, um, a, a multitasking thing again. So and the point. Thing as yeah, well, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a point where a pupil has left things fairly late of course there are numerous reasons why they might leave things late but when the um, I keep getting a button that comes up on Blaine's phone um, that uh, when a pupil has um, a, a lot of that routine so your MSPSL routine for want of a, a better way of putting it gets left to then be squeezed into a smaller space of time the mirrors is the thing that drops off the priority list yeah so if you say if you don't see something and then you're your panicking that's what's going to happen so that could be down to particularly and I think now with sat nav and following the signs that if people aren't looking for the clues for the roundabouts or the junction the two junction whatever they're not going to see them and then they're suddenly going to get a direction from the examiner or the device then that's when the panic sets in so, so the easiest thing to drop is the mirror I think particularly when it comes down to this 600 yards, 300 yards, oh, 100 so yards, that, that kind of thing, it can it can get them. So uh, so certainly that, that multitasking thing is the thing that makes the mirrors fall off the bottom of the priority list. Now the next um, feedback from our little group of examiners is that they wonder whether it's a case of a pupil who may well be doing mirrors um, fairly regularly on lessons, because we're there mm. nagging about mirrors, and so we become the prompt. We don't let them not do mirrors. I think even to the um, point of, you're going to take the next road on the left. See your eyes, mm. you know, they can feel your eyes in the side of the head, so mm. they look. But, you, but we become the prompt, yeah. and they mirror that action. Whereas the examiners look out the front and say, at the mm. end of the road, turn left. Mm -hmm. So it can be as simple as just changing that. If you tend to look at the pupil when you give the command, that's a prompt. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, of course, the point being that when we're not there anymore and we're not the prompt, be it a physical or a verbal prompt that we're mm. giving, the pupils don't do it no. on, a, on a driving test. And therefore certainly don't do it when they're passed. Yeah, absolutely. So it's looking at the, it's trying to sell them the mirrors in a way that they buy into it and will therefore do them long term, not just because it's for the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's looking at the becauses, as we would call it, and get them to buy into whatever the becauses are. Yeah. And the because isn't because I told you so. Yeah. So you're acting earlier half the time, if you see something you need to act earlier to be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And and if they buy into whatever your reasons are, then they're much more likely to on a long term basis, aren't they? And of course then getting to the point where they're independent. I'm I'm kind of coming away from this independent word. I think it, it's slightly mis Mm. guided in terms of the fact that they're never truly independent um, when we're there but I'm preferring to use that word responsibility so actually the responsibility becomes far more there. Mm. So anyway we, we digress in terms of talking about this from a driving test um, point of view. Um, my little group of examiners have also said that um, the mirror's change of direction will be absolutely the most common reason why they put a mirror fault down yeah. um, and exa all examiners will, will tell you that. Um, but the, the 
message again from them was that if a people has a good solid understanding of the use of mirrors when to use them how to use them why we're using them and how to react to what we're seeing in them that quite often a good solid people will have enough nonce to be able to get themselves out of a potential serious situation with good use of mirrors so that was mm. um, that was quite interesting so i would say in my head that could mean something like changing lanes coming to around about realizing that the middle lanes are the left lane and by good use of mirrors, they can probably do a safe lane change or not do a safe yeah. lane change because they More decide it's, yeah, it's not safe, so yeah. we'll go left instead. Yeah, see something that tells them that they can't yeah. do something. Because yeah. if you don't use the mirror, you either stay there when you could have gone across or you go across when you shouldn't go across. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was the other point that, uh, that they made? Oh, yeah, the other point was, was that when it comes to um, uh, mirrors' change of direction, it's... A very thin line between where that fault would be put, so it's it, it's a, a fine line between perhaps a mirror mirrors changing direction with a lane change, for example, um, that can go with a lane discipline issue, mm. or into a use of mirrors change of direction, or vice versa, or backwards and forwards. So that again was the point: was that that fine line between where could that possibly go in both. Couldn't if if there's lane discipline things you got in the wrong lane in the first place, and then you don't correct it correctly because you're not checking your mirrors, you're possibly going to get too serious for the same thing. So Potentially, that's quite possible, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. guess so. I could yeah. ask that question. But, but from my experience, you, you, it's quite easy to get two or three serious for the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just I'll give you a serious for it, we're not going to give the others because it depends on the factors. Because mm. They're, not, they're separate things, aren't they? One, getting in the wrong lane. Two, then how you recover. It's two separate things. If it's something that happens at the same time, it'll probably go in one box. But if it's something that sort of rolls on, then it's more than one fault. Yeah. yeah I've not been on the examiner's course, but that's my experience. Yeah. I also think that it's probably fairly interesting, again, to note that when it comes to the other mirror faults that aren't in the top ten, that yet again this links to safety critical stuff. Mm. So in terms of getting away with the odd failed mirror, middle mirror check when slowing down for a traffic light that is turning red and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get away with that if it's not safety critical. But the safety critical stuff, classically moving lanes, um, mm. you're just not going to get away with. And again when it comes to uh, prioritising that within my lessons and certainly prioritising that when we do each other's um, mock tests mm. it is never a minor fault no absolutely. It, regardless of the outcome regardless yeah. of what's going on because it sometimes it's just be. luck that it wasn't a major issue yeah. luck I think one of the classic we've come up with we'll see a lot recently I think we'll hear about a lot recently is people changing lanes on roundabouts I think so, you know, particularly that third exit right where mm. you're coming off the tomato onto the crust, yeah. um, you, uh, you're you not going to get away with not having a left mirror check, whether yeah. there's anyone there or not, yeah. because it's the understanding of the potential for there to be somebody there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's it. Go and incorporate mm. that into your lessons. Um, tell us if you have clever ways of um, doing particularly mirrors, change of direction. Yeah, getting the people and, to buy into it, because that's... Mirrors is the hardest thing to get people to buy into, isn't it? Without doubt, I think. They'll buy into clutch control and blah, 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 whatever happens to be. But mirrors is, is and all, always has been, so people have got a really good way of getting people to buy into it. But saying that, people buy into it for different reasons. Different people buy into things for different reasons, don't they? So one th isn't going to fit all, but some might be worth using and trying on different people to see what see what's going to work. Yeah. Okay, okay. Bye.